Hello, and welcome back to Minecraft with Dark Force Dios. Today, I got some tech it, and I'm actually going to do a tutorial for you guys, because tutorials are cool. So, um, this is actually a tutorial on how to build a stable nuclear reactor. Yes, that's right. A stable nuclear reactor that will not explode no matter what. So, I got the crafting requirements here and all the crafting stuff and this is the thanksgiving episode just so you know all right so here's what you're gonna need you're gonna need one nuclear reactor six nuclear or reactor chambers one clit or four collector mk3s which um all the crafting stuff is over there an energy condenser um a glowstone pneumatic tube filter bunch of uranium cells four timers and four blocks of ice all right so now we're gonna move over here so these are interdiction torches by the way they repel monsters so this is the crafting recipes for the reactor and the reactor chamber so you're gonna need advanced circuitry uh, advanced alloys uh, reactor chambers and one generator to craft a nuclear reactor and in order to craft the reactor chamber you need advanced alloys and some integrated reactor plating and one integrated heat disper disperser once you get these two items you can use them to make a reactor so this this block here stands on its own and you can place whatever you want inside of it coolant so if i placed this and then i placed you know a uranium thing it would run but if you take well, this is uranium blocks but if you went and you decided to right click it and then you took a chamber you can do this you can place them on there and it will increase the power amount and the size in which the reactor is see it's already increased in size see what i mean and the maximum size you can get the GUI is, is um see now you're here if i place one more on the bottom which i'm about to do then it will be max GUI. Maybe not. I always find it easier just to hollow out the ground around the um, reactor because it can be a problem. So the first thing you're going to know about your reactor is when you're making it, you're going to want to watch out for not just heat, but the atmospheric heat. So just because the reactor is cool on the inside doesn't mean that lava around the reactor can actually cause a meltdown this easily so this is the pneumatic tube in the energy condenser so you need two brass ingots um one block of glass to make one pneumatic tube and you'll need um eight of those and for the al the energy condenser you need four industrial diamonds or four diamonds, it's diamonds, not industrial diamonds, I screwed up, and four obsidian, and one alchemical chest, which I'll show you the recipe for that if I press R. You need one diamond, um, four different, or three different uh, uh, covalent stuffs, or three different colors, two stone, and two iron ingots, and one chest. So, that's what you need for that. And then here is the timer and the collector. So the collector runs off of red matter, which is really complicated, which you need um, a bunch of eternalist fuel and three dark matter to make one red matter, which you can use to make red matter tools, which are amazingly powerful. And you need a collector MK2 and a bunch of glowstone. Then you have a timer right here that you have to have stone wire, three stone wire, two stone anodes, one stone cathode, and two stone wafers make a, a timer and the way the timer works is you right click it on the ground and if you or you place it on the ground and then you can right click it and change the time and it will make a time loop that it creates a redstone tar charge and I'll show you the settings for everything later so then you're gonna also want your blocks of ice which I kind of provided a little recipe for that you need a zero ring which is made with you need this <coughs> which is right here and a water bucket and this recipe will not use up the zero ring so you'll still have it after you do the recipe and you can do it indefinitely and then you're also going to need uranium cells which are refined uranium which is when you put it inside a condenser 
or you take uranium blocks here it shows you the page two if you put uranium inside a condenser uranium ore or uranium ore either one it makes uranium refined uranium which is what you need so and then this is how to make a empty cell which is what you need to make these and you need a ton of these things and you're gonna want more than more than just enough for one batch all right so next we have filters so you're gonna need one of these and it's two gold ingots um, five cobblestone and one red doped wafer along with one piston and the red doped wafer is crafted via a silicone wafer and redstone inside an alloy furnace which is another thing and you can use anything that's wooden to run it okay now that we've got that down we got all our ingredients I already built a reactor which I'm gonna build another one but I wanted to do something and by the way happy Thanksgiving people gobble gobble goes the turkey all right we fly over here now we are gonna first of all I, I built a test reactor for you guys to show you what it should look like okay so this is what you're gonna want to do first you build your reactor okay so you got the reactor and the GUI see that's your GUI and you're gonna want first of all if you're gonna build more than one reactor next to each other you don't want to run it like this because it'll um, it will melt down and explode it's pretty epic but it will do that so this is max efficiency max power pretty cool so here's how it works these timers Wait, that's a filter sorry these timers are set for 0 0.200 milliseconds so that's very fast and every time it hits the redstone circuitry the filter sends a block of ice from these energy condensers which above here the ice reproduces so if I like took one it reproduces ice it's pretty cool so um, and the way to do that is you need your collector mk3 right here this will create energy you place that above this and then you place your block that you want it to copy right here so if I wanted it to copy say cobblestone I place that there and it would start copying cobblestone in the open slots okay and if you want to increase the speed in which it creates things you can put um, glowstone on top of the machine and it will uh, run slightly faster collecting EMC which is what you need then you've got two pneumatic tubes leading up to the reactor which I already showed you that and then so that's pretty much the design idea now I want to show you guys if you build this wrong this is what's gonna happen so I'm gonna break these to show you exactly how bad it is and also it will not run it cannot run on one of these it can only run on more than one so now this is what's gonna happen the reactor is gonna start melting down and I'll show you some of the key meltdown things first of all when it runs out of ice which we're gonna do now because without ice to provide it now alright it's gonna start smoking and I'm gonna back up because it's gonna blow alright oh, I need to turn my render distance up here real fast sorry I had it down because I was here um, right there normally is where I can run it okay ready and we're off oh crap no oh, okay well, we all heard that and also it um I'll show you the the size of the crater which is pretty dang large so this is this is what's left <laughs> it's wow yeah nothing really and this is just a, a broken chunk here this little grass block but I lag so bad if I don't pick this stuff up so that's all the ice and stuff that it produced in the the fuel the uh, Eternus fuel. Anyway, I'm gonna pick all this stuff up because if I don't, I will lag like crazy. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to build one. Unlike that one, which I blew up on purpose. So this chunk is just gonna annoy me. So all right, I'm not even gonna stress about it. Anyway, so step one. First of all, we'll go back here and we'll build it at the spawn because it's not that hard to build. So step one, you're going to want, um, first of all, I need to access my inventory, so. Alright, we got the filters. We're going to need timers. And this stuff, the reactor can power some very strong things. 
I made a tricore reactor, which I can show you guys in some images, that runs really well. So you're going to need a timer, like I said, your pneumatic tube, which is not hard to get. Um, pneumatic tubes, you're going to need... Let's first of all, let's get rid of this. We don't need it. We already have one built. We're going to need some energy condensers. Boop. All right. And then you're going to need some... Wait a minute. Oh, wait, no. All right. You're going to need that. And you're going to need some collectors. Boop. And then you're going to need some glowstone. That's pretty much it. Other than the reactor chamber and all that. So, once you've got all that stuff, then you can start placing the pneumatic tubes. First of all, I prefer to have them two away, but you can pretty much set them as far away as you want. I mean, just think about it, though. The farther away the pneumatic tubes, the farther your ice has to travel to get to the reactor, and the longer it's going to take for the ice to get there. Now, granted, that doesn't mean that the reactor is going to melt down because the ice can't get there fast enough, but it's a good idea to build it fairly close. I mean, I don't like my, my stuff right up on it, but I don't like mine ways off either. So, now... You place your pneumatic tubes hooked up to the reactor on all four sides. And this is important. This is really important in order for the filters to work. Now you take your filters and you stand with your face towards the place you're going to place it. Like a, like if you're placing a dispenser. And you place it in that direction. What you want is you want that hole to be pointing towards you. And you want the yellowish color to be pointing towards the direction you were standing when you placed it. Otherwise, it will not work properly. See? So you want the hole pointed towards you like in a dispenser if you're trying to place dispensers. So, that's not too difficult, is it? Now you place your alchemical chests. I forgot to grab the ice. <laughs> um, you place your chests here. And I can show you also that this is capable of running some very powerful machinery. So, now we've got that done. You place this on top. All right. So then you place your gobble, your your glowstone, right here. So that, um, first of all, the problem with this is you can't stack these. The GUI messes with you. So I just kind of do things on my own. So I haven't set up the timers yet because I don't want the clicking noise. It's so annoying, but it's kind of a drawback of having a very powerful reactor. I run, when I build reactors, I've always wanted to build a mega core reactor, so I built one that was really funny that was like three cores, and it was way overpowered, but it was freaking amazing, so I'm not complaining. And I will show you that in another episode, because I actually built an entire city for a school project, and it looks really cool. And it's surrounded by a series of force fields, so it runs really well. Now that that's all done, let's place this last one here, and then I can set up the timers with the loading mechanism. Now my recommendation is to set up the timers and just fill the reactor up with ice before you place the cells in, because the cells immediately kick in, and if you have no ice in your reactor, then your reactor is going to blow before you have a chance to finish it. And so it's a good idea to... Um, well, it's a good idea to place the block that you want to put in there as quickly as possible. So, now, if you see what I'm doing, I'm taking the ice block and I'm placing one there, and it begins making copies of it, which is really cool. So, and that, you do that on all four sides. And then after that, you can do a bunch of other stuff. See that you can make, you can make copies of everything. I mean, I'd prefer not to make copies of that red matter stuff because it would take forever, but, you know, whatever. Anyway, so now that that's done, you get to do the really cool part. So these timers, now this is how this works. You place timer, and I will always hit it for negative 10 seconds, which immediately sets it to max speed. And it will pump the reactor full of ice, and by the time you get them all loaded up, if you haven't loaded the reactor with 
uh, uranium cells yet, then the reactor should be full of ice by the time you get there. 64 stacks. And then you place that. Now you gotta keep in mind that you have to do this this way. Okay. Now, the next part you're gonna want to do is... Wait, that's my old inventory. Yeah. Wait a minute, I forgot to show you guys. This is amazing armor. I love this armor. Okay. Charging. This is like my favorite. Ready? Oh wait, it's, it's set on passive mode. No, no passive. I want to kill everything. Yeah, that's better. It will kill groups of creatures like this. <laughs> it's so much fun to use this. I used it in a fight with uh, a friend of mine late earlier, earlier, and it made for an excellent battle tool. Also, the boots allow you to sprint faster and just plain look epic other than the fact that you don't wear pants. There's a bug where you're not wearing pants no matter what. Oh, and I forgot to show you the coolest part. You're a freaking creeper. Just wait. I'll show you. Creeper. Oh, wait. No, I gotta put the sword away. It won't work if you have anything in your hand from the equivalent exchange mod. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you can literally blow stuff up. It's pretty cool. See? Habushke! Habushke! You're like a creeper. Anyway, let's go back. Nope, nope, other way. Yep, alright. There. Back we go. So now we can load the reactor, which is not that hard of a task. Normally, I just, since if you have any eye, then that's what I do, but... Alright. This, this specific class that I had built was meant to run the stuff, you know. And I'll show you how amazing this machine is. It immediately detects that there's an opening, and it fills it. Watch. Just watch the reactor, see? Now we can take all of this, get rid of it, because I can't use it. Anyway, I've been experimenting with weapons to use against a friend of mine in another battle. If you remember the uh, the um, fun tech it server fun with uh, Zach, we had a battle and he won with the nuke. Well, I figured out the jam armor's secrets and you could shoot lightning and all kinds of other cool stuff. And I found out a whole bunch of other things. So now you fill it with uranium cells. Blah, blah, blah. Make sure you turn off trash mode. Otherwise, it will delete every time. Now, this is important because if you do any more uranium cells in this, the reactor will blow. So, you place them in this way. You always must have at least this much cells. It doesn't have to be much more than this, but if it's any more than that, it can be a problem. You always have to have at least seven blocks of ice or seven 64 stacks of ice in there at a time for it to work effectively and eventually the heat gets so hot that it gets up to a thousand degrees and then gets cut down by the ice blocks here. okay so once I'm done making all of this then I'm gonna show you the extent of the power of this reactor just by how quickly it can, I can use it to make um, force field. So there's major drawbacks with using nuclear reactors just as much as there's major um, uses to them. They are one of the strongest produ producers of EU, but with the unfortunate thing that they are very high maintenance, meaning you're going to need a lot of time to take care of them because you're going to have to refill the uranium cells every like three days and they produce such high voltage that you can't hook up um, fiber optic or you can't hook up glass fiber optic cable to it right off the bat. So I'll just kind of show you the extent of the power by running a force field around this entire area, 32 blocks with all the fixins, you know, all the zappers and stuff. Okay, so you got the field, the reactor is now officially running. So now we need to clear my inventory by pressing this, and then we'll take some <coughs> high voltage um, 4x4 cable, or 4 INS cable, which is huge cable, you'll see. That's the cable I'm talking about, it looks like a freaking block, doesn't it? Because it's so big. Anyway, you take this high voltage cable, 
and you hook it up to your power system. So in this case, it's a force power injector. And this is also a thing on how to do this. So you're going to need a Neo injector. You're going to need a core. And you're also going to want a... Um, some kind of projector. So I, I like to use area because that projects it over a certain area like uh, the range is like 32 which doesn't necessarily mean 32 blocks it just means 32 okay that's done okay so we got all of this set up the MFS, MFS MFFS area projector force field core and EU injector we need a lever that's the best possible tool for this <coughs> and I'm going to want a blank MMF MFFS card. There. Now here's how this works. You place your injector, and then you place the core on top of it, and then you place a lever on the injector, and you pull the lever, and it runs both of them immediately. And after that, it'll say that it has um, some force power after you take it out. And this is the amount of force power you have access to, and looks how quickly it's charging. It holds up to 10 million, I think. All right, and then you take the blank MFS card, MFFS card, and you place it in there. And what you end up with is an MFFS frequency card. Okay. Now, what you do with the frequency card is you place your projector. You place your lever to power the projector. You can even run it with other means, and then. It doesn't look like it's about to go, but after that's done, you take your card, you right-click it, you choose your settings. I'm going to choose 32 because it's the max power. So, and you place the card, and it should power up, and habushki, you have a field. So, you have this massive force field if you're looking. And you can see from my camera screen, this is a really big force field. And even the force field loads fast, so it reaches up to about here. And you can also upgrade it with other powers, like I'll show you one of them. Um, you can do, let's see, there's zapper upgrade. Let's see, here's the zapper. We don't need that anymore, we don't need that anymore. Oops, my screen just popped off for a second there. Um, zapper try dome and we'll try underwater and maybe camouflage the camouflage is pretty cool so if you want to upgrade the thing you could do the same but this is specific to that it should light up there like that meaning it's running but <coughs> and then you place your other one and that would be it there and you can place them around in a certain square around the projector. And then if you want to edit them, you can do this. You right click it. Oh wait, not with an item that isn't going to make it do that. Like this, a red guitar. And then you can change the matter of the block that you're using like, but it has to be of either this mod or it's, it. sometimes it doesn't necessarily accept certain ones. So we'll try lava because I've never tried that before. It should say okay if it accepts it, and if it doesn't accept it, then it runs glitchy. So we could try, I don't know, but I want to try this. Let's try Cooper Spawn Blocks. Nope. It'll say okay. Let's try TNT. And it'll work with TNT. Okay. So now if you want to upgrade it or change it, then you go in and you take the MFS card out, or you can just turn off the power. And it will reset it to look like this. Now it all looks like blocks of TNT. And also what the zapper upgrade does is it changes it so that the um, it gives it a power. Plus this is now a dome. <coughs> so you can actually go underneath it. See? But you wouldn't normally be able to do that because the force field creates a little cube around you. Like if I went and I broke the dome upgrade and turned it back, you'll see. Let me break it. And you'll see, and bust the dome, turn off the power, turn it on, get some lag, and then the force field will be up. 
And if you notice now, it's a cube. And it will run all the way down to at a certain point, which is 32, because the force field, the projector is the exact center of the field. So it'll run this way up and it will run this way down. So the same amount of blocks upward as it will downward, which is pretty dang big. Let's see what other blocks it can transform into. Let's try <clears throat> thunder. It'd be kind of cool, actually, if you could do that. I don't know why, but I'm going to test it anyway, even though it doesn't say okay. Ready? Click. Click. Let's see what it does. Oh, it's completely invisible now. You can see on the, the mini-map in my right-hand corner that it is still there. The red line represents the field. It just won't show. Let's try this. Nope. All right. I got to think of one that's interesting and cool. Also, the field does not produce light, and it will let um, light in, or it will let other things in. Let's try doing a Nova Catalyst or Nova Cataclysm. Let's see if that works. No. Okay. You pretty much do anything, though. Anything from equivalent exchange, it'll accept. But <coughs> like, if I chose a, um, let's see. Can't think of anything from equivalent exchange now. Alright, let's go back, and no, we're gonna go this way. Dimensional anchor. Not power teleporter. There, let's see what that does. Nope, not gonna work. Alright, take that back. Let's see, um... <laughs> booze barrel. Okay. I think these will work. Nope, alright. Um, I guess not. Because sometimes they don't work, so we could try... Let's try these. Because these are source, so... Nope, not gonna accept that one either. It has a very few range of what it'll accept. Oh, it'll accept mushroom block. <laughs> okay. Let's try melons. And basher would have a te temper tantrum. Yes, melons will work. Alright, let's try the melons. Melon apocalypse. The great melonocalypse is upon us. Man, basher would love this. <laughs> um. Anyway. So, that's the, the force field and the power of this reactor here can power this force field and then some, like I could power, if I wanted to, I could power three more projectors to shoot tor tubes out that way. And you can increase the range with certain upgrades and all the fancy doodads and stuff. And so that's 